Now, the Lebanese accused of raping his Ghanaian house self at Airport Hills here in Accra has been granted bail. Rabi Haddad had been in custody since he was arrested on December 3, 2017. Meanwhile, former Attorney General Marietta Bu Apiao Pong, who is taking a strong interest in the case and is a lawyer for the 19-year-old house help, is questioning how the police ended up with two conflicting reports on the presence of semen in samples taken off the victim. According to the former AG, whilst the first test carried out at the police hospital on December 3 indicated that some semen had been identified on the victim, the second showed no trace. There's more in the following report. Wife of the accused had shed tears weeks ago when a court had a gen hearing of her husband's bail application. His legal team, led by Ralph Pokwedu, say subsequently had their day before trial judge Justice Kofi Dogu. They prayed for bail as they assured their clients will comply with the court. Prosecutors opposed the move, saying they feared a 39 year old will not be available when needed. They added investigations were still ongoing. Justice Dogu on Monday granted the application, saying enough time had been given the police to gather evidence of which they have failed, hence the decision. Former Attorney General Marietta Bria Pion, who is lawyer for the victim, is unhappy with the latest development on the police investigation, which contradicts an early examination conducted by police hospital. There's been some information that has been put out in the media without even the knowledge of the victim or myself. We also read it on social media. And of course, that raises issues of concern for me. In fact, what I know is that when on the 3rd of December, um, when the girl went to the police hospital for medical examination, the lab tests that were conducted said that there was some semen found in the specimens that they took. Now we are being told that the crime lab or forensic lab, again of the Ghana Police Service, that conducted the DNA testing are also saying that no semen was found. For me, explanations have to be given as to the discrepancy. First of all, the documents have to be presented to the Attorney General who decides on the, on the basis of the documents presented to them whether or not to um, proceed. My view is that, whether, irrespective of what the DNA um, results say, a prosecution can still be mounted. But we'll, 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 we'll wait and see what the Attorney General says. Hearing of the matter is expected to continue at an Accra District Court. Now, Joy News can confirm that one of three suspects arrested in the early hours of Monday with seven pieces of grenades is linked to the ISIS. According to an undisclosed source, the suspects were picked up after a police tip of here in Accra. Though the police cannot confirm the motive behind the grenades they were carrying, our sources say these grenades are either from Libya or Niger. Nancy MFA Dradozi visited the Udoko police station and reports. We are at the Odoko police station where we know that three people were arrested earlier today in connection with some terrorist activity. Now what we do know is that the police around 10 a.m. had a tip off that someone was carrying grenades around Agape in Ablekuma. Now the police went in and arrested Abdul Karim who is 30 years old and was in possession of seven pieces of grenade. Now, with further interrogations, he was able to lead the police to the arrest of two other accomplices um, who go by the name Ismail Ali Musa, who is 31 years old, and Osman Al Hassan, who is also 33 years old. Now, what we do know, and our sources can confirm to us, is that Ismail Ali Musa is actually an Islamic militant now he works with the ISIS and this was revealed because they say that they went into his phone and they saw pictures of him in activities engaging in activities with the militant group and the man himself the man in question himself confirmed to the police that indeed he was part of ISIS now we don't know the intent of where they were going to use the grenades but the police have assured that they are managing the situation from here at the Odoka police station Nancy MFA Jardosi join news
All right, so this is what we picked up from the grounds when Nancy M. Fajradozi went to the Odoko police station. But the police has since sent in a statement, and I'm going to present uh, that statement to you. The statement is titled, Police Intercept Explosives at Accra. And it goes on to say, police have intercepted some objects believed to be explosives of varied species at Doko in Accra. The explosives were intercepted based on police intelligence. Three persons, names withheld. So the names have been withheld, but uh, Nancy Emefajradozi in that report was able to give us those names, have also been arrested in connection with the intercepted explosives and are in police custody. Police is investigating the matter in coordination with the relevant agencies and therefore assures the public to remain calm. The police is continuously working to ensure public safety. Anybody with information related to the case under investigation is urged to promptly call 191 on all networks or 18555 on Vodafone and MTN. And I repeat the numbers 191 on all networks or 18555 on Vodafone and MTN. And this is signed by the Director General of Public Affairs, David Aklu, who is the Assistant Commissioner of police so the numbers are there on your screens again 191 on all all networks or 18555 on vodafone and empty and that is if you have any information related to the case and their investigation and this has to do with the arrest of three persons in uh, who were apparently had some explosives of various spe various species at odoko in accra and the explosives uh, were told were intercepted based on police intelligence now, still ahead in the bulletin, we're hoping to get to speak with the Director General of the uh, Police uh, Public Affairs, DSP, Assistant Commissioner of Police, David uh, Clue. But also ahead, Deputy Electoral Commission Chairperson implicated in staff welfare fund scandal, George Nopuka Mankwa faces off with officials of the Economic and Organized Crime Office, backed by armed police officers who had gone there to her office to demand that she leaves. I'm not moving an inch. So if they can carry me from my seat and throw me out there, then they lock it. Right now, though, we're taking a break here on Joy News Prime Stage. Welcome back to Joy News Prime. Officials of the Economic and Organized Crime Office were at the offices of the Electoral Commission on Monday with an objective to force the Deputy Commissioner of the Electoral Commission, Georgina Opokwa Mankwa, out of her office. Madam Mankwa is set to have defied an order of interdiction by Ioko and reported to work Monday. The stand of the last close to five hours was settled after a meeting between the Executive Director of Ioko, Georgina Opokwa Mankwa, and her lawyer. This is what transpired as reported by Joe News' Latif Idris information we picked earlier today has to do with the fact that some two members of Ioko stormed the Electoral Commission this morning. Uh, they moved straight here at the office of the Deputy Commissioner uh, asking her to vacate the office. Uh, but now what Madam has said is that the only authority that can get her out of office is the presidency. So she's for now waiting for the directive of the president to ask her to proceed on leave again. Other than that, not Yoko, not the national security, not any other body can get her to proceed on leave. If they want to use force, I mean, I'm a woman, I can't fight men. But for me to just walk out like I'm going out and then you lock it, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, for them, they are just saying the investigations are not over. And until the Attorney General gives advice. Yes, that's what they are saying. And then what... I'm not defying any such thing. What I'm saying is that in, in law, the principle of law, if a matter is before a circuit court and a superior court sees, I mean, it sees with that same matter, Automatically, the one in the lower court lies flat. Mm. Yes, so now if I'm in office, what am I impeding? Because they've already taken all the documents, blah, 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 and done all the investigations and had sent their report to the AG. So what am I here to do by way of impeding in, in investigation? You come back tomorrow and then your office is under... I'll break into it. 
I will break into it if that happens. You are destroying public property? I'm not destroying public property. Why, 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 what is it about? What is it about it? Now the Chief Justice Committee, a whole Chief Justice Committee, chaired by a Supreme Court judge, it says with the matter. So what is Yoko? Is the Supreme Court Committee comfortable with you coming to the court's That is what I'm saying, because the matter before the Supreme Court or the Chief Justice Committee is a matter affecting all the three commissioners, all the three executive commissioners. So why, what myself and my lawyers are saying is that, okay, is the who is close with that authority to write to us to go home for investigations to continue. So I'm back here. If the president writes that we should go home, why not? Uh, that is a situation here, <laughs> but we still have the police and the Yoko all stationed here waiting for madam to move out of her seat and out of her office. But from what we're seeing, it appears she's not going to budge. But only time will tell. So I would like to quickly find out from the Yoko, the Yoko Executive Secretary of Yoko, I mean, why the body is taking up this. Yeah, but, but uh, he's declined to comment to us. Uh, so we do not know other motives Yoko, I mean, have on asking Madam Georgina to move out of her office and continue with her leave. It's been six months since she started, and today she's defied it to report to work, saying that it is only the president that has the authority, the power, to ask her to proceed on leave. And that is the only directive she is waiting for, not Yoko. And so she's still in her seat. She's, I mean, defied directives by the executive director of Yoko to leave the office. And so far, no force has been applied by the police and Yoko to get her out of the office. That is the situation now. Uh, it could change in the next minute. But for now, Yoko and the police have not used any force to get Madam Georgina out of her office. But they are standing on her right now, waiting for her to pack her belongings and move out of the office. But that has not happened as at now. She stayed put in her seat and has vowed to only move out at 5, which is the official closing time here at the Electoral Commission. Let, let's just quickly find out from Madam Dejina. Uh, Madam, how does it feel having personnel from the police service, armed personnel, I mean, standing on you in your office with the sec director of Yoko? How is the feeling like right now in, in your in office? In terms of? Just how you feel right now. This is your office. This is well, where you operate from. Uh, uh, and all of a sudden, you have men from the police service mm. armed with guns storming your office, I standing on you during like, working hours. You feel it's, no, 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 no. As for that one, no. Because if anything, like I spoke to my lawyer, if anything, I, I can be arrested. Uh, because I don't know why. I close at 5. It's not 5. Uh -huh. so. But they just ask you to move out of the office. Oh. Mm. So what, not if, if five I'm not moving, mm. then I think there's a problem. But before five, I still have it's eight to five. Oh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so. <laughs> All right. So that was Madam Georgina Poku just moving into her. Right, so that was uh, the story as a Latif reporter from the Electoral Commission. Now, we're returning to our top story, which has to do with the arrest of uh, three persons, including one suspected to have links with the terror group, arrested with explosives of different kinds uh, here in Accra. The police has issued a statement to that effect. Right now, we're joined, on, uh, the, we're joined live 
by the Director General of Public Affairs, uh, David Eklu, Assistant Commissioner of Police, who actually signed this statement. Uh, thank you for making time to join us, uh, ACP, uh, David Eklu. Now, what more can you tell us about how you intercepted uh, the, the, these uh, explosives uh, with, in the hands of these three persons? Yes, the interception of the different types of uh, explosives uh, was, is based on the information that uh, the other court police received. And after analyzing the information, they moved on it over the weekend and uh, arrested three persons who are currently in our custody with uh, these explosives, these objects that we suspect are explosives. Well, so we've seen photos of uh, grenades or what we believe to be grenades. Are these just the grenades or there are some other explosives? Um, Israel, what you have seen in the photos uh, are not conclusive. Uh, we are subjecting them to further uh, analysis and investigation by the experts. That is why we stated in our release that we are collaborating with the other security agencies and uh, who have expertise in that. So we bring all on board and make sure that we identify the type of explosives, where they come from, and how they got into the hands of uh, these three suspects that are in our custody. What more can you tell us about how you came across these three? You talk about uh, based on uh, police intelligence. What more can you tell us about that? Um, for now, that is, that is all that we have. And. Uh, as I said, the, we are investigating the issue. The suspects are in custody, and we are also collaborating with the other security agencies. And uh, as soon as we get further information that will be useful to the public at this stage, uh, we'll put it across. Now, these three that you have in custody, do you, are you of the opinion that they're working alone or they have some others that you, you're seeking to arrest? Uh, for now, the information we have is scanty, but we believe that the, there are others that they might be working with, and that is what we are pursuing now. But for the purpose of protecting the process of investigations, ensuring the integrity of the investigations, ensuring that we don't jeopardize further uh, our police investigations. Uh, we will leave it at this for now, that we have them, and we believe that there are others that we are pursuing. That is why we put out this uh, emergency numbers 191 uh, for all networks and 18555 for users of Vodafone and MTN, so that anybody with any other information relating to this issue and the investigations can, pass, can uh, call us or contact any police commander within the nearest jurisdiction where a person might be in possession of that information. Are these three working together? Uh, for now, uh, we cannot tell because they are currently in custody and the investigators are interrogating them. So that information is not available to me now. But does it appear that they are known to each other, as in they are interacting with each other? I, in fact, I don't have that information now. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ed. You are also indicating what sort of uh, information are you expecting people to share with you? Anything at all they have concerning these people, like, especially when uh, their names are not really out. Are you willing to give out their names so that people can link them? Um, the information we worked on initially that got to the Odoko police uh, was based on the vigilance of the public that these people were in possession of some strange objects that came to us. So already the awareness is there. We all encourage the public to be more vigilant and look out for people who might be behaving in a suspicious manner, who might be in possession of strange objects just like what we have now, and let us know. But if it becomes necessary for us to put out their photographs for further 
identification will not hesitate to do that. But this is not the right time to do that. All right. Uh, I must say, though, that we have uh, their photographs. Is it fair or is it okay for us? Or do we have your blessing to put it out so that people who know them would supply you uh, further information? The photographs you have are not from any official source. So I would caution that you handle them with a second circumspection. Uh, this is not the first time that we have put out photographs of suspects for the purpose of uh, the public helping us. And if we reach that stage, we will do it as per the laid down procedures, so that we follow the laid down procedures. So for now, the photographs we have are not official, and they are not officially released by the police. Do we, are these people, these three, facing any charges yet? For now, they are being inter interrogated. But if you look at the, the objects, yes, it is an offense to possess this sort of explosive. So those are the possibilities that we are looking at. But interrogations will give us further information as to which appropriate charge to prefer against them. There has been talk of the terrorism charge. Because this... Pardon me? There has been talk of a terrorism link. Can you confirm that? Uh, we don't have that information now. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Assistant Commissioner of Police, uh, David Eclus, the Director uh, General in Charge of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service. Watching, joining us, Prime. We're taking a break here now. We'll bring you business news. And coming up in business, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, uh, Sam Jonah, is unhappy with governments over reliance on foreign direct investments at 69th annual new year uh, school gets underway at the university of ghana we have that story uh, coming up also still uh, come, still ahead in the bulletin hawkers who have returned to the pavement at the kwame in kuma interchange following days of an crime metropolitan assembly and forced the congestion as are blaming the high unemployment rates for their recalcitrance we have that story also coming up our station Right, so we're staying with this story. You're welcome back to Join His Friend. We're actually staying with this story, which has to do with the arrest of three persons, said uh, with one, including one person said to have links with the uh, terror group ISIS, arrested with explosives of different kinds here in Accra. The police has issued a statement to that, it, that effect and is urging the public to remain calm and that they're working to ensure public safety. But right now, we're joined, I'm joined in the studio by... Uh, Adam Bona, he's a security expert and he has uh, been gathering some information as far as the activities of these uh, terror cells are uh, involved and uh, he's done some work on the operations here in Ghana. He joins me in the studio uh, with uh, some additional detail on the arrest of these three. Thank you very much for making time, uh, Mr. Bona. Thank you. Now, what more can you add to what the police uh, has told us about the three who have been arrested? Do we know when they were arrested? So they, they, obviously, they were not arrested. Uh, the arrest didn't take place today. It's been, they, they arrested them a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. And so, uh, yes, the, 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 the truth is that they have been investigating them and trying to unearth all the people who are connected to them. And so uh, it's surprising how someone mysteriously shared the, the information, put the information into the public domain. We have to part the Odoko police, we have to, you know, uh, I mean, maybe the, the police service in general, we have to say kudos for the good job, uh, you know, they've done. They were tipped off and they were arrested. And so one would say they've done a good job. The only thing I think which is terrible about this whole thing has to do with sharing the information because, you know, this, te you know, terror cells, they operate, you know, in, 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 in networks. And so you would have arrested three but then you would have several of them who are around and within this country Probably and would elsewhere. have been tipped off. Yes. But you're indicating that they were arrested, uh, they were not arrested today, about uh, 10 or so yeah, days yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so whatever the police is doing, whatever investigations, or if the police needs to follow up on uh, people who are connected with them, 10 days should be enough, should it? No, 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 no. When you are dealing with, you know, people who are connected to alleged, you know, ISIS and probably Boko Haram and the rest. I mean, they, these people are, they are a complex uh, set of people. 
using all sorts of conventional, unconventional means to communicate and get to their target. And so 10 days would not be even uh, investigating petty T free, you know, sometimes takes more than 10 days. And so 10 days is not enough to say uh, the police should have gathered a lot of information. Okay. Sometimes it takes several days, several weeks, you know, sometimes years to be able to uh, you know, get all those who are connected to a particular right. cell. Arrest. You indicated that you were wondering how the information came out. Yeah. I'm not sure how the information came out because we, we got it, uh, our sources uh, gave us that information. Mm -hmm. But then we also have the police following up with a statement. So that goes to show that whatever information was put out initially was not far from the truth. No, no. What, what, what the, I'm not saying the information that was put out was wrong. But what I'm saying is that uh, the police had to come up with this information because now the cut has been let out of the bag, and so they had to come and so say, So you yes, mean they were true. compelled to yeah, come they out? Yeah, they were compelled to come out because then uh, it is sad to note here that even the alleged suspect, their images have been shared on, on, you know, social. The, the, on social media, on you know, online portals, and I think it is wrong. It shouldn't have been done. I wish the police would be able to investigate because then... These days, we all carry mobile phones that have, you know, cameras and all that. And so, uh, this definitely would have been done by one of, you know, the the one of their own kind who might have shared this information. And so, those who are connected to this suspect, some of them might. This is has a potential to destroy uh, some of the things the police would have wanted to get before sharing, and also creating unnecessary panic and fear in, in, in you know, uh, amongst us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Now, all this while, the stories that have come up about ISIS uh, related to Ghana have to do with uh, some Ghanaian making his way to go fight or support uh, ISIS out of the country somewhere in, in the Middle East. Now we're getting information, or with this arrest, it suggests that the people are a lot closer home and they have weapons, they have um, explosives right here with us. She would be worried. Oh, we should be very worried because they, they've always been close at home. The only thing we haven't been able to do, like I always say, is the intelligence information gathering, intelligence setup in the country is almost close to nil. And so it makes it difficult to be able to track and trace who is moving out of the country. You remember recently some of our uh, brothers and sisters who were repatriated from Libya into Ghana, they got to Kotoka and Dubai, go home. No one did any debriefing. We need to know. We are told some of them were enslaved. We need to know, did you attach yourself to any terror you know, cells when you were in Libya or Syria? And, and so once we continue to behave this way, then and also even look at the, the, the border areas. I mean, Togo, Hamile, and the rest. Very porous. And so uh, one would want to say the rhetoric must stop. Our leaders, our policy makers should stop you know, talking and you know, take some action, decisive action. Recently, looking at the immigration recruitment, just 500 uh, you know, are going to be recruited. Why can't we do more? They would you know, put it at the doorstep of money. Yet, we have potential explosive, a lot of them probably in this country. And so, this is how sad the situation is, yes. Now, you're telling us that we should be really, really worried. Yes. But the statement that's coming from the police is telling us that uh, we should remain calm. I mean, within, within, I mean, one will say, looking at, we definitely would have to urge everybody to be calm, don't panic. That's the only way you can get people, or else, once you put people in a state of fear, people might be afraid to go about their normal duties every day. And so, I mean, it's the statement as put out by the police is the right, you know, information. It is a, that is the only way sometimes you can counter these people who would want to cause harm to, you know, peaceful countries like ours. And so, yes. What should we do? Uh, we as, have to remain. We have to remain vigilant. Vigilance is the key. We what should we to, be looking out for? We, I mean, what should we be looking out for? Uh, the truth is that if you have a neighbor, uh, a young person who has left the country and has come back, you want to, you know, where did this person go to? You, I mean, we live in communities where these days we almost look like we live in solitary confinement. We don't know who our next door neighbors are. And so we need to be monitoring who is going where, who is coming in, how many people are visiting. And, you know, these days, some of these people come in as preacher, 
you know, people, they come in trying to preach. Islamic preachers. You know, uh, you know, not Islamic preachers alone. I mean, you know, putting it there might be, you know, I wouldn't want to go there. I want to say they come in as preachers. And so sometimes we need to interrogate, where are you coming from? Do you have links to anyone? And also uh, in other countries, they put in filters so that they are able to flag some of these uh, keywords with regards to how this uh, terror, you know, groups share information. And so picking information timely is very important. But at the moment, uh, it is, we, you know, we, the, the investment into the security sector is woefully inadequate. All we hear is just talking and talking and talking, and the investment is never coming in. So we are waiting for something to happen. You know, we have a ticking time bomb, even though we have to remain calm. We are waiting for something to happen, then we say, okay, what do we do? I All think right. we, we have to, this, if we have to act, it is now, because they are with us. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Adam Bona. Adam Bona is a security expert, and he uh, has uh, been doing quite a bit of work regarding the activities of terror cells here, here in Ghana, and uh, he has been sharing some insights with us. What we know, what he's been telling us, is that the, these persons who have been arrested, the three who have been arrested, with explosives of various species, as uh, indicated by the police, they were arrested it's about 10 or 11 days ago. And uh, as he's urging, and as the police is urging, we should remain calm. And the police is telling us they are continuously working to ensure public safety. You're watching Joy News Prime. We're taking a break. <laughs> Now moving on to some other local stories here on Joy News Prime. Introduction of the school feeding program has enormously boosted education, especially in rural Ghana. Parents are more encouraged to send their children to school every day without having to worry about what they will eat. In some beneficiary schools, however, increased enrollment and high retention levels spells congestion. Nana Sensomensa looks at two contrasting situations in the Ashanti and Central regions in the following report. The introduction of school feeding program in some rural communities has brought about increase of population inside schools. Obviously, has also brought pressure on some of the schools. This classroom, for instance, contains KG1 and KG2. Obviously, this school needs infrastructure to boost teaching and learning. Just one year, after Chichiwari Methodist Junior High School in the central region was enrolled on the school feeding program, its population increased by over 33%. This puts a strain on infrastructure facilities as well as teaching and learning materials. Francis Texan is head teacher. We are facing a problem of uh, furniture um, because of the enrollment um, the enrollment right now has increased in this school uh, due to this school feeding program. And he calls for swift intervention in the provision of test books, furniture, and other logistics. Uh, so the government should, in a way, come to our aid to also um, help us at least if three or um, three classroom books will be enough to sustain and then also improve the academic businesses here. So Ketra Ama Amwa has her fair share of the pressure. My name is Amamwa. I'm a cook at the Methodist Primary School. Before the introduction of the school feeding program, I was the only cook here, but now its introduction has led to an increase in the student population. There is pressure on facilities as well as cooks here. We are humbly appealing to the government to bring in more cooks to contain the increasing number of pupils. It's a sharp contrast to what pertains at Chebi Municipal Assembly Basic School in the Shanta region where authorities are lobbying for school feeding to be extended to them. Victor Molle is head teacher. It has never been introduced. I've been here since 2014. And since I came, and before 
my, my predecessors even has not witnessed anything of a feeding program in this community. Back in the Upper Dentra East Municipality, authorities are making efforts to deal with congestion and other challenges. Municipal Director of Education, Joseph Fillmore Insia, said the pace must increase to match growing enrollment. Dilapidated structures, yes, which need renovation. Other schools need entirely new buildings. In fact, there have been steps to do that. I've notified the assembly, I've written letters to them so that they can uh, come in to help. Reporting for Joy News, Nana Asensu Mensa. Now, there are questions about the total amount of money given by the Trade and Industry Ministry to the Millennium Excellence Foundation for the organization of the Expert Business Awards. President of the foundation, Ashim Morting, told the parliamentary committee investigating the scandal when he appeared on Monday that $2.6 million was passed on to it by the ministry, which collected the sums from sponsors. But Deputy Minority Leader James Abeji says the details available to the committee do not add to that. Ashim Morton confirmed that one of those who sat at the presidential table, Said Fakri, who is chairman of Interplast, eventually paid $100,000. But he says the money was paid after the event as gratitude to the foundation not to pay for a seat next to the president. I was watching the presentation of the Honorable Minister of Trade and Industry and he made a statement that 17 seats were on the high table. I'd like to make a small correction. When he mentioned all the names, he mentioned the former president and head of state, Jerry John Rollins and his wife. That is two. So that makes that 18. Now, he did not mention our chairman, Ambassador Gbeho, and he did not mention Joe, Joe Mensah from Cosmos. So if you add those two with the former first lady, it becomes 20. Board Chairman of the Millennium Excellence Foundation, Victor Gbeho, told the committee efforts by detractors of the foundation CEO, Ashim Morting, to paint him as a charlatan will fail. Contrary to the inaccurate picture being peddled currently by Ambassador Morrison's detractors, painting him as a charlatan, how to deceive unsuspecting clients, many others including myself, can confirm that this Columbia University trained architect and a keen believer in Africa and Africans, a man of vision and mission, is God-fearing. He possesses integrity, truth, and fairness in everything that he does with a strong passion for charitable interventions. I have no doubt, Mr. Chairman and honorable members of this special committee, that by the end of this hearing, we will all find him an asset to his countrymen and women. It is one of four communities inhabited mainly by Muslims in Yapa East regional capital of Bogatanga. Also, one of the oldest communities in the area, Bolga Zungu, has contributed to the electoral fortunes of the two political parties that have governed Ghana and the Fourth Republic. 
But like many Zongo communities across the country, Volga Zongo is highly underdeveloped with choked open drains and poor sanitary conditions characterizing the haphazard arrangement of buildings there. In the first of our Zongo Agenda series, Joe News' APA East correspondent Albert Sori visited Bogatanga Zongo and came through with this report. <laughs> This is Bolga Zongo. Like many Zongo communities in Ghana, it is mainly inhabited by Muslims. One easily notices the low level of development here at Bolga Zongo. Choked open drains in the midst of the haphazardly arranged houses, coupled with a bad stench that greets a visitor upon arrival. Many of the children who live in this community come to this school in order to build the foundation to their education. But though the school is not in a very poor state, the headmistress, Ai Salifu, does not think that the current state of the school offers a good learning environment for children in Bolga Zongo. The school structure itself is not very conducive for learning. Besides that, the sanitation problem, the place gutters are always smelling and the stench around when the children are in their class, especially in the uh, heat season. They fear that in the event of a disaster like a fire outbreak, the fire service may not get access to affected homes. No roofs in the zone. There's no in the roofs. You see the roof sometimes, some places you see the roof. You pass there, you won't even get the access. You see that somebody will build this house and then uh, extend. I get what I'm saying. Sometimes if there's a fire up, you know, outbreak, it's always very difficult for the fire service uh, personnel um, you know, to, you know, sometimes when they're going to carry out the, uh, you know, extinction of the fire, it's very, very difficult for them. So it's, it's high time we get through it so that it will, at least it will link up, you know. However, there are some other issues that they want the government to tackle when it rolls out the Zongo development policy. If the Zongo people could get an educational fund uh, from this money that is coming to support the people of Zongo, uh, what we need seriously is education. We, when we have education, we have everything. The Parliament of Ghana late last year passed the Zongo Development Fund Bill and it remains to be seen whether the MPP government's Zongo Development Policy will come to full fruition as promised. But the people of Bolga Zongo have very high hopes in this policy with access roads, educational infrastructure, good drainage systems and economic empowerment key among their immediate needs. Reporting for Joy News, Albert Sorry, Bolga Zongo, Upper East Region. And in the headlines, three persons, including one said to have links with terror group, arrested with explosives of different kinds here in Accra. The police is either urging the public to remain calm. Person implicated in staff welfare fund scandal, Georgina Opoko Mankwa faces off with officials of the Economic and Organized Crime office backed by armed police officers who had gone to her office to demand that she leaves. Lebanese accused of raping his 19-year-old Ghanaian household finally granted bail after spending more than a month in police custody. Former Attorney General Marietta Drew appeal upon is meanwhile questioning by two tests conducted on samples taken off the victim are contradicting each other. In business, Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Sam Jonah, unhappy with government over reliance on foreign direct investments at 66th annual New Year School gets underway at the University of Ghana. That's it for the bulletin, <laughs> many. It is Israel. I have a good night.